about the company or or where you are working and neither you you speak about it so uh, uh so you can quite openly speak you know you uh, that way what happens is uh, you know uh, you come to really understand what your expectations are and 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 see to it that we match those expectation um so this is fair enough right somebody you know he working as a system administrator and and he wants to now do it devops because that is a natural progression so anyway system administration is long back gone uh, so that uh, more than a choice it has it is almost that you have to do that right anybody else guys anybody from a different background so we have somebody from sys admin background anyone from a different kind of background i don't mean this is jagadish yeah yeah uh, actually i have 12 years of experience and uh, i started my career as a sql db okay mm -hmm. so i you know you know right so the sql db is almost gone so nobody is asking okay. sql db after okay. uh, this crowd has come yeah okay so oh, yeah. and after after uh, doing uh, my job as a sql dba i started my career in uh, windows administration actually i am a dual role uh, i'm doing a dual role in my company okay, okay. So, uh, enterprise admin as well as uh, sql dba so, oh, okay um, i thought uh, devops is the best place to uh, grow myself that's Correct. why Came. got it got it got it yeah yeah you are also natural uh, that is the that uh, logical step that you have to do next you know when you are doing multiple things and uh, and for those kind of roles uh, devops kind of mindset you know uh, and of course that uh, with the mindset you should even know the technology how to implement it right so this this is this this uh, definitely suits you as well you know i have a question Maybe so yeah, yeah. Can I ask yeah, go uh, ahead. You, you, by the way, guys, you know, you can just be free. You can ask me anything, all right? The more yeah, you yeah. ask, the more you get, right? Yeah. Thank you. So, actually, my question is so, do we have any uh, development thing in this uh, course or uh, it, it's something like an infrastructure side? Okay, okay. I'll come to that, okay? Yeah. Okay. But just go ahead and ask your questions, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll answer those as we go ahead, right? And any other, we'll just want to little quick guess. Yeah. Hi, Ravi. I'm Muhammad here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into IT operations and infrastructure, as uh, my previous colleague was saying. So I have mm -hmm. last like 10 years of experience into IT support and managing IT operations, okay. so mainly the help, help desk team, you can say. Mm -hmm. So I just further want to enhance my skills in okay. IT with the, with the new technologies and how we can implement those in our organization and how it will be beneficial to us. Okay, okay. Got it, got it, man. So, so I think last two, three, everyone I hear they're from administration background. Anybody else? Lakshmi, Umesh, uh, Sumit, Sairam? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Lakshmi. Hi, I'm Tulasi. Uh, I have worked uh, in IT, like uh, five till five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, I have moved to US along with my husband, and uh, I want to rejoin IT background. And I see that the DevOps is in boom, and uh, I feel that uh, the job openings and everything is uh, high Correct. in DevOps yeah. area. So right. I wanted right. to right. pick up uh, this thing. I have worked on SAP business objects, and now uh that is a little less in demand so got it got it i got it i wanted to take up something new and then which is in demand and start working got it got it all right um and by the way guys you know i i you know i think quite hello you are, yeah sir i am i am from become background so mm -hmm. is it for a stressor from become is it good for um, become student okay. okay 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 i'll answer that anybody else little quick uh, otherwise I'll, I'll i'll give a little bit brief in of what we'll do as part of this course or what this whole devops is okay. anybody anybody else anybody else want to say 
Hi, sir. Actually, okay. I am from Singapore, but uh, I'm not working in any, any IT industry actually before that. So, but here yeah, currently in Singapore is very high availability of the IT uh, IT sector. Chacha, I want to move on to IT. How it will going to work on like a DevOps? Yeah, because I heard the people saying there is an I need to learn many tools here. Uh, yeah. Is it e easy to learn or uh, like? Uh... <laughs> okay. All right, guys. I think I think I I I got I got a an idea like uh, kind of composition we have for today's this demo. Okay. So okay. I, uh, yeah. So give me a few minutes. Um, I, let's say you know. Uh, give me half. I, yeah. I have a question. Uh, sorry. Actually, um, I'm I'm a working as a product owner. So okay. I'm nowhere related to any of the technical uh, technical expertise uh, or anything. But my interest is to join in this uh, course is like because right now I'm working as a product owner in a company uh, like networking side. They're into mostly into cloud computing, Azure and AWS and all. So want okay. to get domain knowledge, uh, for example, if the people like me, how how this course should be, will be helpful uh, from the basis it is going to be uh, demonstrated or um, uh, how this course structure it. pattern. Yeah, that's my question. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, got it. You know, see nowadays, uh, I'll, I'll speak about but product owners certainly need to have this knowledge, especially if you want to run your, you know, agile process and you yeah. want to your manage your uh, board and other thing you see the, you need to really know uh, so that there are two things huh? yeah. why you need to know one is at a mental level you will get a lot of comfort exactly <laughs> at a working <laughs> level <laughs> yeah at a working level what happens is it helps you even though you may, you may not do it practically it helps you to really plan out the stuff more than anything, if people tell you something, you'll understand, uh, you know, mm -hmm. whether that is correct or not. Otherwise, what happens? Exactly. Uh, you know, you you are a product owner and your scrum masters keep uh, always uh, kind of uh, yeah. you plan something and and it keeps mm -hmm. going for the next sprint, right? And yeah. they, so this is not happening. That is not happening, and all this. Yeah. I Sorry, have to rely happening. more on them, like to correct, get correct. small things as well. So I think it should be good to know basics yeah. at least. Uh, yeah, uh, without with. No, this was nicely think... designed. This was this course is very nicely designed. I'll mm -hmm. tell you the flow now. Mm -hmm. uh, see, as I told you, um, you know, uh, if you, uh, I, you know, I'm I'm uh, a practitioner, so I uh, work as a senior architect and a lot of solution kind of stuff. And uh, I've been doing this DevOps training for a long time. In fact, uh, uh, whoever are with Visual Path, you would have heard my name from a long time. It's just that last few years I was busy with other stuff, so I, I never got an, uh, uh, kind of time to do it. Uh, but let, let's start it from here, OK? See, we'll start with what DevOps is, OK? Now, when I try to explain to you what DevOps is at, at a, a at an implementation side, I mean, when you actually work uh, as a DevOps guy, what do you do? Okay, so that is what is the question we'll try to answer. So we'll we'll start it from some time frame, let's say around 2015 or that time. Okay. In the last five, six years, things have moved a lot. So we'll see that how the things have changed in last six to seven years. Roughly, you know, you can say even if you want to put some experience and other things, you can you can start you can start putting it from 2015 or so. Okay? Uh, before that, also these tools were used, uh, but not under a big. Um, kind of a uh, kind of a role called as a devops what actually happens in devops is this okay only two things you need to and uh, you know uh, understand here okay see the word devops okay so what is the meaning of that is one way to see that word is it is basically you can see it as 
a kind of a developmental operations but generally devops means it, it, it's a it's development and operations so idea is that see how about uh, having developers and operational guy work with a similar kind of a mindset so that is a concept the concept is to see that developers who build your applications operation guys who manages your infrastructure and all that they think similarly and try to use a similar kind of tools so that across the board you see that there is a kind of uniformity in terms of tools in terms of thinking uh, that's the idea with which they came with this concept of devops but question is why did they come with that concept or what was the necessity to come uh, with a concept like devops okay <clears throat> so again again you know for next 10 15 minutes uh, don't see it now think in the terms of last six to seven years back okay now nowadays all a lot of companies are maturing to a level where you see huge devops teams and devops uh, practice uh, getting into kind of a, a certain kind of a maturity level right see here you see ops right you see dev here so you take a operational guy uh, here we have jagdish and and, and and quite a few who come from a operations background right so let's say we take a, a windows admin just for example or a linux admin or a sql admin what is that operation guys do operation guy guys responsibility is to create the infrastructure and maintain the infrastructure on top of which your applications will run right so what is that they do they they'll they'll uh, do the installation right so today if you are said if you are want to run an application and that application uh, let, uh, needs uh, let's say sorry Ravi, to... sir i think your voice is breaking it, is it for me or a all um, is, is my voice clear yeah it's clear okay maybe yes, if anyone finds a little bit problem you, you know just try to reconnect okay and one other thing just in uh, so i uh, i have a, a backup internet connection also just in case anywhere you see me uh, getting disconnected just hold on for a five minutes i should be back online okay uh, so what is the job you do the installation right so your application let's say you need oracle so you tell your linux admin or a windows admin or your uh, if a, or a, your database uh, dbas what they do they take system and they'll do the installation right so this is the system they'll install your oracle right and what are the other things they do they do uh, user management stuff meaning that who can log into the system and all that kind of user administration they do it uh, nowadays of course we use the term more of our back but still user administration is what they do what are the other things they do uh, <clears throat> they'll manage storage right so you need uh, some hard disk space and all that so they manage your devices like your you know hard disk or or your SAN and NAS and kind of storage devices, right? So they build a whole infrastructure. <clears throat> On top of it, your applications will run. Right? Now, if I take a perspective of a developer, okay, what is that they'll do? A developer will write the code for your application right so how your application has to run or behave he'll write a code for it once he writes a code for your application uh, if you see the sequence of things what is that he'll do is instead of having that code on his or her laptop or a 
workstation they'll put it on some kind of a repository or some kind of a version controlling software what is this version controlling software it's a central place where they'll put the code so that multiple people can collaborate and you get advantages like you can do rollbacks and all that but anyways my idea here is to tell that developers write the code they put it at one central place so that multiple people can collaborate right and they keep keep updating that code right uh, once the code is ready then they will test the code also right whether it is working fine whether it is working properly uh, or not and if they see that code is working properly the testing is happening fine then they will deploy the application deploy means they'll they'll try they'll put they will put it on an infrastructure they'll put it on an infrastructure or your servers uh, if i have to take a little bit uh, the generic term so that now the customers can start accessing the application okay this part i'll come first let me see these three things so this is generally or broadly how uh, the different uh, teams work at an organization uh, even you know i uh, i started my uh, career and uh, thing as from an administration staff and slowly moved into different roles and all that okay but what was the big problem uh, that used to happen especially when you manage a very very uh, big infrastructure or a, the scale of infrastructure is quite big the big problem what you used to face is these guys these development guys who are there right they do their they used to work as a kind of a silo meaning the development team they used to keep on building the applications you have your unix or windows team they keep they used to keep doing their work and the moment when the, your application has to be deployed on 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 your main production main environment then you keep noticing that oh you know what when i was doing testing everything is working fine but today when we have put it in the on the systems where uh, you know our customers will start accessing it i we see that there is some problem coming okay why will the problem come when you test it somewhere if it is working fine uh, and you test it somewhere else certainly it should work right but a lot of times the problem used to come that it never used to work there is a reason okay, why that kind of uh, problem used to come or why uh, you see a drift in kind of the setup from one place to the other place what used to happen with the operation guys i'll take a very fundamental example okay installing oracle okay the way they used to do is let's say i am the main architect okay or or the main um, guy or uh, engineering manager or a architect which or role you want to call i have a, or, a unix admin or an oracle dba i tell them you know i want you to install oracle and i tell them okay this is the document okay this document let's say i have taken it from oracle support or let's say i did some testing and i prepared a document and i i give it to this guy this guy now i tell him see this is the system i want you to install oracle on this what this guy does is literally he follows step by step whatever i mentioned here and he sets up the oracle okay so after a week all right i i get a requirement again from the development team that they want one more oracle server uh, for a let's say this this machine uh, they want oracle to be installed okay so this is some kind of a testing environment so it means they want to test the application here they say that we need a system on that uh, we need oracle installed now i give this 
to an another person and I give him the same document okay and I tell him or her to do the installation of Oracle again he or she follows the same document and they sets up the Oracle database or Oracle uh, installation they do it I'm speaking let's say these are two environments okay this this is one kind of Oracle the first guy has done this is the second guy has done documents are never perfect two guys take the same document do the same thing also you can never ever say that both are identical okay the reason why you can never say both are identical is there is a human factor here right today let's say i come with a certain kind of an experience i do you give me a document and you tell me to follow that document there is certain kind of knowledge i come with and if anywhere while doing that i find a problem i'll fix it up and, and get it done right not necessary that let's say somebody relatively new follows the same document uh, he follows the same way he might choose some other option to get it done okay. eventually both will say that okay installation is done but not necessary that both are identical when both are not identical these two something if it is working here may not work here meaning that there you always see that when two people or when you manage things manually there is always a drift in a kind of a configurations there is always in this case i have taken an example of two systems but you talk about enterprises okay uh, and enterprises who are there on prem on prem means they have their own data centers and all that with hundreds of servers imagine even same kind of things if let's say you set up 100 oracle servers everything will be different from one another i'm not saying every time it will be different but there is a always a chance that it will it might be different okay so what was the problem is this was a main one main problem that was almost like a headache for all the managers you know i personally uh, used to see that uh, you know that time 2015 16 that time i was a manager and managing a, a kind of a infrastructure and that time we used to call some build and release teams uh, when the application is ready and we want to put it so that our end users can start using it and that day it was almost like a you know uh, what do you call it if it is almost like a high tense kind of an environment okay i go to uh, office and we do that and everybody tests it and say that everything was working fine then it was like a big relief why we always had that kind of a pressure is always at the mental kind of level also always a doubt you know when we tested it it is working fine when i put it here whether it works fine or not and more than anything one more problem is because i'm exposing to my external customers if something goes bad even for a few minutes we miss a huge thing on a business side not just on the business side even at a a kind of uh, uh you know the impression that you you, you give to your customer uh, or user experience when they try, uh, will not be that good right but why was that happening because all the things all the things whatever an operation guys used to do it it was always manual when i say operations uh, guys i mean you know sysadmins dbas okay network admins security admins and all that okay? nowadays all these anyways all these are branded as devops uh, roles but that that used to be the kind of different roles uh, at least few years back even now it's there slowly people are transitioning but all these guys majority of times it was manual stuff even if they were doing it the way they were trying even if they were kind of automating the stuff the kind of automation that that um, operation guys uses they used to write scripts using something called you know shell scripting or or PowerShell or Python or some kind of a scripting they used to do and little bit automate the stuff. Okay, a little bit automated that is good, but still you know 100% of automation is never there. 
and and you always used to find this kind of a, a drift when you set up with multiple systems that was a one major problem and uh, um, and even even you know you in terms of labor in terms of amount of time you set up also when you start doing things little bit manual even though little bit automation is there still you know the amount of time was high guys you know i give a job up to somebody saying that okay do installation of oracle he takes the whole day oh he says oh you know i started it at morning and kept on doing 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 right so that that that's how the operation guys used to work and these guys used to be in their own world building applications and all that that kind of a synergy of these two guys working together never really happened it was almost like this was a silo these people were in their own world and these people were in their world stuff doing things right other thing when the dev here when i say i mean developers as well as even testers also guys okay broadly i put them as in the in this dev it means dev, uh, you know developers as well as testers these two guys were anyways you know uh, working together uh but operation guys were working stuff you see that even now in quite a few places where the devops practice is not really uh into a kind of a uh, little bit matured uh, level you still see this right so what they have noticed is see all these problems is coming because if you are in an organization and you every there are two or two different kind of teams working and they are working for a common purpose of having their application run on a on properly these guys are responsible for managing the server managing the os on that managing the software on that and these guys are responsible for setting up their application how could it be that they work in a silo way right it should not happen but that is how it is to happen then they came with this concept of devops and they said that how about this let's try to come let's try to build a kind of a, a you know a culture in the company uh, culture i'll come maybe a, a little later but the idea is that let's come or let's try to bring in some kind of a, a practice where these people and those people use as much as possible similar kind of tools and at least if not one is tools tools is anyways is okay at least they start thinking in a similar way otherwise the problem is you know i was for a long time with this i talked to a developer he keeps telling you know see i have written my application i have written a class and i have written an api in, in uh, python i have written my this thing in dot net and something and he talks to me i tell them oh you know what today i did a installation i run these steps and these things for me it was very boring to listen to what he is talking about apis and all that for him it is very boring to listen to me when i keep talking you know my router is this my root is this or i have done the installation of this that because it's a completely different kind of a thinking right so this is the backdrop guys okay this is how it is to be for a long time from 2015 slowly uh, people started moving to the devops in devops what happens is or what they pitch this see how about this we need both of them to think little bit similar right so what we will do is either these guys should think like this or these guys should think like that right so what they said is operation guys now you do one thing exactly the way how developers write code for their application you also write code for doing your infrastructure work the way developers write code, code for the application operation guys you also write a code for doing your stuff now what is that these guys do let's say creating setting up a new servers installations user management or configuring your storage setups or all the things whatever they're doing they please that you also write a code for it the way developers they write their code they put it at a central place so that multiple people can collaborate you also start putting your code in a 
uh, repository. Okay, for now I'll just put it as some version control software. Okay, so this is what is actually your Git and all that. The way you know developers do the testing, you also do the testing of your code. Okay, we'll come to this point for a moment. Leave this point. So idea is that they said that operation guys you also start doing your work with a developer mindset now, what is a developer mindset write a code for everything right exactly the way he is doing you also do it the only difference is the code he is writing is for application the code you are writing is for your infrastructure how to write down the code how we'll make it easy will come right so this kind of a mapping they wanted to bring in you see you see this guys so that is the big thing that happens in a devops kind of a stuff this code what i'll write is now if i want to do the installation of oracle instead of maintaining the steps and all that in a document i'll write down a neat code for oracle installation all the steps i put it here now you see the net effect i have written the code for installing oracle i'll take the similar example what i have taken a little while ago where i'll tell this guy hey can you do the installation of oracle for me and this time i'll tell him all that you need to do is run this code he runs the code he sets up oracle here okay a week later, if I had to set up Oracle again here, I will, let's say this guy is an, another guy in the team. I tell him, hey, set up the Oracle, use this code. He will also run the code and Oracle is set up. Now I can tell with 100% guarantee that both these systems are same. Why? There is no kind of a manual stuff there. Both of them are doing the same thing and that is running this code right now why did i say that put it in a some kind of a central repositories because if you take an operation guy and today uh, even if we call them as a devops team and they are managing the infrastructure so one guy is there one guy is there these three guys are responsible for installations so what we'll do is we'll take one central place we'll write we'll put our code here so that all the three can start updating the code right it's not that one person will sit and do it right the whole team will have to work on it so that is why so this is what i actually meant at vcs put it at one place so he'll update it later this guy have want to change something in the code he'll update it this guy will update it so, but at a thinking level what is a big thing or a big change that happened is if i have to do some task rather than taking a document and seeing the steps that is given in a document and trying to do it on a server the approach now is this document i will write a code for it and whichever i want to whenever i want to create a or do the installations or any kind of a setup i'll just run this code for today, for now, I have taken an example of installation, but this is in a merge generic uh, term. This is called configuration management. It means what you want to configure on the system is called configuration management. So the whole configuration management, whatever we want to do, I'll write the code for that. That is what I have put it here, guys. That is what I have put it here. And this code now is called as IAAC or IAC, whatever you see nowadays. What is that? Infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code. So this code now is called broadly, it is called as infrastructure as code. My spellings take it easier. And I would uh, you know, writing has gone down so bad infrastructure as, go, as code so in a devops kind of an environment for an operations people 
the big change will be that you will not do things manually but you will write code for anything that you want to do and that code is called as an infrastructure as code so this is the big change that happens in the devops world okay so what is the thing we brought in now we brought in a kind of a concept where even operation guys also are thinking like developers when managing their infrastructure so nowadays you go anywhere you tell them boss you know i need some hundred systems and and each system should have some kind of a configuration you see that code is already there they run it and within a, a half an hour time all the hundred systems are ready unlike previous days where they say hundred systems installation you know we need one week or two weeks time to set it up because a lot of things people were doing it a lot of things manually that is gone now the second i can think what happens uh, in a devops world is that let me come to this deployment from a developer kind of a mindset right or or developers not mindset developers what is deploying is you they create an application okay you will you'll see that there there will be different environments in your company okay let's say this is called as a testing environment and this is called as a production environment what is this testing environment they will install all the systems with all the softwares whatever are required to run the applications and they'll say this is the testing environment meaning that you put your code on these systems you put your code on these systems and your testers will come test it and they say oh you know we tested the front end ui part is coming fine and when i enter this everything is coming fine they say everything is fine we are giving an approval now we we can have our customers start using it then what they will do the same code they'll put it in the production environment what is the production i mean this is the environment where your actual customers will access these applications right see what used to happen um, uh, here for a long time is uh, generally uh, applications things right before you even come to deploy you write a code you write a code okay let, let's say you write your application in java or whichever language you want then you need to create a executable form of that and the whole process is called build so you'll after that you will build the code and after that you deploy it right what is this deploy it is actually just deploy is nothing but just copying it onto the servers in a proper place so that your application works see this build and uh, deploy they used to do it a lot of places manually okay now what is the meaning of manual is uh, even though there were some scripts to build it and deploy it the way it used to happen is if this is the repository the example i have taken here right all the developers are updating uh, code here code here so once the code is ready then they used to they used to take this code build it once it is built it they they used to deploy it okay but imagine a company uh, you know something like uh, you know amazon or nowadays i think um, um, almost um, if not all at least majority of companies you see that they come with so uh, many changes or they come with changes so often that unlike previous days you will see that application keeps cha getting changed even on a daily weekly basis also you might see in some companies they'll keep changing it previously the way used to be is that any change is there once in a month or once in a two months they used to change it month but imagine uh, you know just for example you take amazon and today i go to amazon and tell them hey you know i want to sell uh, let's say some headsets uh, and i want my company to be uh, listed in your uh, on your site and if they tell me all right ravi you know it's a great deal we are also linking king for a vendor for you we will put your products on our uh, website and if they tell that you know what we update our site only once in a month okay imagine what will happen to their business it means whole year only 12 times they'll be able to update the site it means today i make a deal with amazon i have to wait for 30 days before my product is listed there 
that is not the way how you have to do your uh, your business right rather the best option is if today i make a deal maybe tomorrow it started then you know the, uh, the thing starts rolling out so in that sense what in devops what they uh, uh, came up is a practice called cacd this is called as continuous integration and continuous deployment where the idea is that the moment the code is updated here okay this any change happens in the code this process of build and deploy should automatically trigger and it should go ahead and get completed rather than any kind of a human kind of a manual doing you change your code then it should go trigger a build it should uh, it should build the software and it should get deployed i'm not saying that it should be directly put into the production but it should at least in some test environment or so and from test it should go to production those all those things right so whatever things were happening on the developer side manually they wanted everything to be automated and that is called cicd what is cicd any change that happens in your code on the central repository the rest all steps whatever you were doing previously automate those things so that is the change that happened you know uh, on the developer side okay cicd now now sorry guys i think if i bore you for 40 minutes but let me tell you now what now what is devops guys devops at an implementation level devops at an implementation means when you start working or when you are implementing in your company only two things will happen only two things one is for whole infrastructure rather than to doing manually you will write the code for it which is called infrastructure as code and at your development side instead of doing things manually you will configure a cicd okay just few minutes more guys so this iac now i told you you have to write a code so one of somebody were asking me hey ravi you know i come from so and so background can i do this or somebody asking hey it seems that a lot of tools has to be learned and all that right the first thing is the tools whatever you need to learn for uh, your iac this has nothing to do with any of your programming language meaning you don't need to know java you don't need to know python you don't need to know shell you don't need to know you know dot net or anything in fact it is much better if you are not from a programming background the reason is the tools whatever are prescribed for setting up these things one such very popular tool which is called ansible which is which we cover it in course these tools are called as declarative tools okay what is the meaning of declarative tools is when you write code in these tools all the devops tools and let's say specific for ansible which is the most popular tool now in any company here when you write the code you don't need to write classes objects this that and all that the way you will write a code here is basically you will tell that what is that you want these are called declarative languages meaning that you need to tell what you want i want i want this i want this i want this rest all this tool will take care or to put it other way it is dead simple that anybody and everybody can write uh, code in these tools you don't need any programming language that programming kind of logic nothing is required pretty pretty straightforward and anybody can write it down uh, in fact that is how it has to be right otherwise who will embrace these concepts so they came with tools like uh, you know ansible uh, where it is very easy to write all you need to do is you need to just declare hey ansible i want this to be done i want this i want this i want this i want this this is called as declarative language where you tell what you want how to do it the tool will take care you don't need to tell how to do it you just tell what you want right whereas in a traditional languages you want something to be done you have to tell how to do that also right because they will not know how to do that whereas here you just tell i want this this the code is ready uh and so th this is where uh, broadly if you see the syllabus i this uh ansible and terraform uh, comes under this category okay 
and in the syllabus if you see for this part uh, we have mentioned jenkins and and some aws there is something called code build and code commit these are the tools to learn this okay so till 2000 I, i'll 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 you know uh, just give me a few more minutes i'll wind up then you can ask me your questions so this is how it started 2016 uh, 15 16 17 like that right the other major change that uh, happened is uh, till that place you know even before covid also uh, we see a lot of common a uh, lot of companies still were maintaining their own uh, data centers what is data center the place where they'll put all their servers so hundreds and thousands of servers used to manage one big change happened last two years and it is happening quite fast even now is instead of companies managing their own data centers and other things they are moving to cloud right so the cloud that will be covered as a part of this course is uh, aws these tools these concepts will work even if your company is having an on-prem like this on-prem means their own building with all their servers everything physical servers like this or else even on cloud also it will work so that is where that aws concept comes in one big change that is happening now now especially last year or so i mean it's going there from last two three years but now very very aggressively go, uh, going is uh, slowly your applications and other things uh, instead of really running it on a systems or a servers like this whether that could be on prem or cloud uh one concept which has really picked up and you see in a lot of companies is uh, containers okay this is a a way of running uh, your infrastructure as well as uh, your applications uh, so to cover this is where you see the concepts like docker and kubernetes this is very important guys extremely important nowadays kubernetes so basically what uh, we we do in uh, courses uh, try to cover these devops tools learn cloud uh, learn how to do uh, uh, you know uh, work with these tools on cloud then come on to the most happening kind of a, a concept called as uh, containerization um, where we learn this docker and kubernetes Okay. Ravi, you have a so, question here. Yeah, just two minutes. Hold on. Huh? We'll come. Okay. So this, this is this is the whole flow, guys. All right. This is the whole flow. Uh, I hope I made sense. I don't want to bore you guys with too much of data, but I think I think this 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 would have given you some uh, good understanding, if not great, at least good understanding of what we try to do as part of this course. All right. All right, guys. So one final thing before i can i start taking up your questions at an implementation level devops is nothing but only two things that is infrastructure as code and imp and implementing cicd nothing else nothing else okay all right now now you guys you can go ahead and ask did it make sense guys did, did, did i bore you guys or did it make sense yeah, we no actually sorry, avoid. Uh, it's not boring class, so it's very interesting. <laughs> we learned so many things. Really? Okay. Yes, nice, it, is, nice. it is too. Yeah. It is too informative, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. actually, I thought uh, DevOps is something like it's a very big thing. So when I ah, uh, nah, this, nah, nah. so it's uh, it's only two things: so CI/CD mm -hmm. and uh, and IS. IS, yeah. Nothing else. Sir, yeah, so uh, why this has been moved from Anvil to, uh, I mean, why this transformation from Anvil, um, then then go to Jenkins, and then now talking about Docker and Kubernetes, all all okay. related to the DevOps tools only, right? Yeah. See, what is happening is, uh, see, DevOps tools. I, you know, as I to, uh, initially mentioned, you know, first you learn the tool, right? We we'll learn Ansible and let's say we learn Terraform, all right? And and let's say we learn Jenkins. Now, can any one of you guarantee me? Let's say uh, you know I'm just seeing like little quick names, okay? Uh, let's say I have Sumit is there, Sairam is there, Jagdish is there. Jagdish might work with a company called ABC, and that company 
at a very strategic level they make a choice that the whole their company they want to run it on cloud Sairam works with a company a huge company who has their own data centers and he works for that company and let's say Sumit works with some kind of a startup and they make a choice that oh you know it is a really burden for us to maintain infrastructure of this size let's use a technology called uh, containerization okay you see you see this right i've taken three different uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of positioning all these three things it is expected that a devops guy does you see that now why we have to go in an organic way and learn a tool first learn it how to set it up on few servers then learn how to do it on cloud then come to the containerization now if you say hey Ravi, you know i just need container let's jump directly into the containers we can guys but learning things in an organic way always gives you a very good understanding and other thing is without learning tools like our ansible or terraform without learning how to run it on a server if if you want to directly put uh, use that in somewhere in docker or kubernetes more than good it will do harm okay so it should always see if some today you know any company let's say today just an example okay somebody said about a singapore this thing see if, if you see many years back also singapore uh, libraries there where they they have done a complete uh, digitalization of that there is a classic cl case of that you know they changed everything but people were not ready with that change and eventually what they have to do is they have to roll back and do step by step so the point i'm trying to say is that's the flow that how it has happened from on-prem to cloud to the container technology right did 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 i did i did i answer it correctly i mean uh, yeah. was that the question okay can we call uh, containers as a private cloud no 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 it has nothing to do with private cloud and everything it's it's an amazing technology guys where the idea is little quick i'll tell you okay just in two minutes i'll give an idea what a container is uh one last one just two minutes sir. just two minutes let me answer jagdish okay jagdish, jagdish and i are very good friends okay and and I am a, let's say, a, a, a Python developer. Okay, I have written a small application. Uh, what that application does is, uh, it it will tell me, uh, you know, what movies are running in near around theaters where I live. Okay, so Jagdish comes to my home and I tell, hey Jagdish, this I have written it. You see it, you know, and I show it on my laptop. And the what application does is it says you know so and so movie is running in so and so theater so and so time and all that jack this finds it very exciting and he says hey ravi just give me that application man i'll also use it so i take the file okay let's say i copy it usb or whichever way and i give it to Jigdish. whatever files i have written let's let's say in python or whatever language i give it to Jigdish. Jigdish copies it into his laptop will the application work on his laptop yes or no why no until the dependencies whatever are required for that application are there on his system application will not work why i said is if python all that libraries whatever are needed are there it will work otherwise until the requirements whatever are there for that application that is there on his laptop my application will not work right so i have to tell like this hey like this install python install so and so modules and all that then application will work the other way to do that is whatever is required this is my application whatever is required dependencies for my application i'll put it all at one place and i'll make it as something called as an image how do you make it is is, is a different thing guys. i'll just make it as an image image for now think it as a file what is that file having application as well as its dependencies everything bundled bundled together and I give it to Jagdish. Will it work? 100% it will work. Why? My dependencies are also there. This is what is your containers, Jagdish. Okay. All the application and all its dependencies put together as one image or for now take it as one file. How do you do it? It's a huge concept. Uh, a very, very exciting and interesting concept to learn. Very simple also uh, is, is, is what containers is. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I you know somebody will ask me. Go ahead. Um, 
the question <coughs> It says like AWS with DevOps, right? So there are like, uh, we, we did not talk anything about any uh, AWS or anything, but we mostly discussed about the DevOps. Uh, but I have a question like, uh, why AWS, why Azure? What is the major difference? I, I understand like this may be the last thing that you're going to explain, I'm thinking, but just yeah. want out of curiosity, actually, have asked yeah. question. Yeah. I, actually, I were done, but I I'll answer your question. Okay, what is this AWS? <laughs> what is this Azure? What is this? What's the difference? Yeah, uh, why AWS? Why Azure? And what is the major difference? And okay. yeah, that's yeah. see. Because, yeah. Just to say, like, because the reason uh, there are two courses offering by Visual Path. One is AWS with uh, DevOps and AW, I mean, DevOps with Azure. This one, no? okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think they would have put a heading of uh, AWS DevOps, uh, uh, but take it broadly as a DevOps course, okay? And oh, by okay. the way, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a AWS uh, professional. Now, the uh -huh. reason why uh, AWS DevOps they have put, they have put it there, is that to tell that we will do. Uh, DevOps related concept of AWS. That is where this code build and all that. Uh -huh. okay. Not generic DevOps, even specifically to AWS also we'll cover. That is what the intention probably is. But take it as a DevOps course, okay? Um, by the way, okay. you know, Not yeah. Now, yeah. second question. Now, second question. Uh, what is this AWS? What is this Azure? And what is this GCP? See, the cloud from Amazon is called AWS. Cloud. Microsoft have set up is called Azure. Mm -hmm. Cloud that Google has set up is called GCP. All these three are cloud only. What is cloud means nothing but instead of managing your own servers and other things, they are telling that, okay, we have already have a lot of servers. We have set it up. You come and set it up on our system, on our network. Okay, it is basically like like telling, hey, you know, you want, let's say today, you know, I live in Hyderabad, let's say somebody, you know, I think Jagdish uh, or someone are living in Singapore and they say, hey, Ravi, you know, we are coming to Hyderabad, uh, you know, we have some work uh, for a month, so I'll buy a house there. Then I tell you, hey, Rajagdish, why you want to buy a house? You know, I'm already ha having a huge house. I, I'll rent you out one portion of it. You live there for one month, you pay me and after that you go, done. Th this is cloud, meaning that they have set up the whole thing. They are telling that if you want to run your application, no need for you to buy and other things. You you come as a tenant on my network, create whatever systems you want, use it. The day you don't want, dismantle it. You don't you don't need to pay me money anymore. It's a great model. So Amazon started it, and they are the market leaders now. It's been I think closely around 14, 15 years they are in market, and they have a, a very high footprint compared to any other cloud. But slowly you see that Azure and GCP also picking up because uh, I see all the three pretty much are same. It's more of a, a kind of a price war. Okay, so Azure gives a huge discounts and GCP is also giving huge discounts. AWS is a little bit costly, uh, but the major uh, maybe too early to tell. But one big difference is that in Azure and other things, you know, uh, because it is a Microsoft product, uh, your Microsoft technologies, especially there is something called Active Directory and other things. Uh, those kind of connections happen quite uh, seamless on case of Azure and in GCP and other things the, it's more of they are the guys who have, who have uh, developed this Kubernetes and all that so they're saying that you know we'll give you a great environment here but uh, but point is this all three are pretty much same once you understand one you 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 you'll understand other things to work so one of the reasons why AWS uh, is generally at a learning level a lot of people do do is because AWS is comparatively comparatively a little bit more uh, uh, tricky and uh, to learn than Azure and GCP. Uh, the other thing is uh, AWS has a lot many opportunities because a lot of people will use AWS. So in that sense, AWS has been put there. Right. But you understand AWS, Azure and GCP also pretty much same. It's just from a different kind of companies. So uh, there are certain and nowadays what is happening little bit hybrid kind of things are multi cloud kind of things are happening. But I think for people who are starting it, this is a great one. You start with AWS, get onto the job there 
and if little bit concepts here and there are late that by that time i think you will come to a, a kind of an understanding where you can learn it by yourself now your answer is there is an azure also there uh, some gcp also course visual path is having and all that uh, what is the difference the, the only difference is you know if somebody whoever are come uh, let's say jagdish is there he works for a company and that company instead of using aws they are using azure as their preferred cloud uh, kind of a company uh, in that sense he'll have to learn azure right so those kind of people come for uh, azure stuff okay Th this course will cover aws as well related yes of course right no no uh, it covers quite it covers quite decently in fact i think very good kind of a uh, uh, very good uh, yeah you know you'll you'll get into a practitioner kind of a mode for aws okay good thank you yeah can I have get a question. question? Hello. And yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shall we use Python project on Jenkins? See, one uh, for as far as Jenkins is there, Python project or, or any project, you know, pretty much the steps are same. Okay, so we'll see. See how to set up your Jenkins and what is um, there is something called a distributed architecture there, right? Uh, there is something called plugins and how do you maintain and manage those things? And uh, then we'll see how to create our jobs uh, there, and we'll we'll see one two examples of how to in case you want to write a code for that, you know, Jenkins file. Uh, how do you use that DSL there? We'll see that. Uh, after that, it doesn't matter whether it's a Python application or a, a DevOps kind of a project or a Python application or anything. Jenkins by itself has no kind of uh, relation with any particular language in, uh, in in particular, right? Jenkins is more nowadays to kind of provide. You can you can run any kind of job job there. It should be seen more in terms of providing a visual kind of a feel to the uh, users. So meaning that you know you can you can set up a Python job or you can set up a Ansible job or you can set up a Terraform job. Everything it supports. Yeah, thank you. And also Terraform covers under this course. Yes, yes, yes. We we'll, Terraform will do it quite decently. We'll do it. Okay, thank you. Is there any order sir, for uh, sir? learning these tools? order uh, you know leave it to me i mean uh, as a, to the trainer so naturally uh, we'll give it take it in an order where it makes more sense or in fact let me put it this the order at least what i generally do i start with ansible okay um, first we start with linux uh, then we get into ansible okay uh, then we'll get into the cloud that is that is a great way of learning okay once AWS part we do it there the DevOps part whatever are written code pipeline code commit that we leave it we will leave it we'll get into Terraform uh, we'll see how to automate AWS with Terraform then we'll do a topic called those Jenkins then come back and do the code pipeline code build and all that AWS DevOps concepts that is a flow because I you know clearly the greatest a good because out of my experience having trained or have done so many batches at different kind of places uh, the way i i always focus or I always keep telling as a trainer is and learn devops is nothing but this so first let us learn this then let us learn this so all the tools what are required for this i'll do it off first then i'll come and do it off your second like that Making sense? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ravi, I have one question. Like, uh -huh. this course is it suitable for any particular audience? Like, any particular? Actually, people? no. Uh, uh, you know, um, see, this is kind of a course. Uh, it it doesn't really make any difference uh, whether you come from a background of uh, a developer background or from a sysadmin background or somebody learning learning new because everything is new here right little bit edge little bit edge you'll you'll see uh, for people who are coming from a administration background uh, we heard little 
the startup session some you know quite a few coming from a windows administration and sql administration so they might find it little bit easy while doing this part but this part of course it will be very new for them somebody coming from a tester or a developer kind of thing little bit little bit edge they might have in terms of understanding this but this is very this will be very new to that or in fact if i had to put it uh, leaving few kind of uh, little bit little bit edge here and there as far as the tool is there it, it will be new for everybody yeah because i think most of them including me they are going to take up this because somebody said it is like very hot in the market and there are a lot of job opportunities and all mm -hmm. and we can further enhance also that is the main reason i believe we, people are going for this but actually any, any, prerequis any prerequisite or any particular thing, see no uh, no no required no. No prerequisite is required. It is it is just a a, a clear kind of a, a a a kind of a decision that uh, you need to make, saying that or a kind of a commitment you have to make it to yourself that. So this is a course, and I believe that this is having a huge market. Uh, I and I believe yeah. that I'll get a job here. I'll I'll fix to the uh, it, and I'll give my two months or three months of time, and whatever is there, let it. Be anything i'll i'll just focus i'll do practice that is all that is required and like for a new for a novice like who is new to this like daily like how many hours of practice do you feel will be better no i i uh, you know maybe i might sound a little bit weird but i always you know see i've been doing this devops from lot many years okay in fact okay when i started i told you i was the guy who started all you know the initial trainer for visual path on devops and other things right so right. what i used to say always is that okay practice is great you should but don't try to do, do uh, too much of practice uh, more than practice think about it uh, what you are doing once you understand what you are writing enough you know because the way we, we will do the courses everything you know once you understand the concept uh, rest all is copy paste we should learn how to do it okay so let's all not right. take an approach like a student kind of approach that i'll will work for 10 hours and other things the right. reason is it is definitely not possible for people who are you know have a family with kids and all that that will not work out but what should, what can work out and what should really work out is uh, a a kind of a clear focus a clarity in thought saying that i'm i'm making a bet now that i learn devops i'll find a job in the meantime i'll not again keep thinking about different technology and all that let me give it a try you know and 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 whoever whoever had that kind of a clear kind of stuff i have observed that everybody uh, were successful okay. the reason is, is that i tell you the reason is we, le we learn a technology we don't get an opportunity what to do with that technology See, yeah. I am an extremely great Python developer. I don't get a Python job. What I'll do with that Python? No, no you know, we need. Exactly. Oh, you do something, it should, it should be you some kind of a dividend or some kind of a, you know, this thing. Otherwise, yeah, uh, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now, so, last question. I mean, after this uh, course completion, Ravi, do we have to take any certifications? Are there any certifications for this DevOps and AWS? Certification is there almost now for each tool here okay but what i will suggest is i mean a lot of people take that aws certification and few people take that kubernetes certification uh, but what i would uh, suggest is see if you have time and other things maybe you can go but even otherwise also uh, the certification nowadays is not required much okay okay uh, nobody really nobody you will not I don't. I mean, overseas probably a little bit. Uh, maybe I, I have to. I have to see how it is going now. But, but otherwise, you know, it's okay. I mean, nobody really cares about certification. But in case you want to do it, then I I would suggest maybe do AWS. So. Oh, AWS. Okay. And, uh, in case you want to put course, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. And during this course, I will one last question. I mean, do we cover any real time projects and all? Yes, yes, yes. You, I, I, you know, I'll have to one see the syllabus. Given, but in the uh, syllabus that is given to you, there is a V profile. Some uh, the diagram is there. One oh, very right. first page, the diagram is there. One set of yeah, V profile. Yes. Yeah, that project you can do. So that is basically a kind of visual path kind of a application, so that people can play around. You know. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Hi, sir. Thank you Hello. so much, Ravi.
yeah yeah no problem sir actually I mean, com coming to coming to linux uh, there is a self scripting coming to jenkins there is a two uh, two scripted pipeline and declarative coming okay. to docker there is a docker file coming to okay. kubernetes okay. there is a deployment file yeah, sir okay. is this uh, scripting uh, will cover from scratch no, sir for from your end naturally right otherwise uh, how we will do it for instance you take kubernetes just because you are taking that name how will you, you write down a deployment uh, file if i don't show you how to write a pod then how to write a service and other things right naturally uh, and by the way guys you know it is 100% practical only right so it will not be that in fact uh, uh, my style is i don't even i don't even use a slide also everything i believe in this concept uh, so uh yeah yeah naturally right otherwise how can that be a learning uh, it is it cannot be a learning that you take some file somewhere execute it and it's say it, it working great that is not education right yes sir, sir. actually from last two weeks i am attending so many demo classes i'm asking yeah. these questions the mentors didn't be clear given clarity about these topics they are simply telling no, that ah, we, are, we, we are we, they are simply telling is, like that sir yeah. sir just, just a minute sir just simply yeah. Uh, give me the answer like ah sairam don't worry we are giving a pdf files don't worry we have a lot of videos we will forward to you you can let no. see sairam uh, see you know uh, I, see i i come with a two kind of an experience okay i'm a i'm an uh, i'm a practitioner i'm a i work at a very senior level of architect for all these devops projects uh, and of course a trainer also my point is you see you are learning something if it is seeing video i mean videos is okay great you know or going through pdf then what is the point in attending a course that's why I'm better we see pdf exactly. only better see video only right? the yes, whole point of attending a course is that we, things are done in a structured way easy way and in a proper way and how can it be proper if you don't write the code yourself if it is cut, yes, cut you, know, you should understand the concept you should be able to do it yourself but tomorrow when you are working you should know how to copy paste and get your things done first that's a different thing but yes, very sir. first step you should not say you know i'll take a pdf i'll copy from there i'll paste it i'll run it and they say i'm done it, it will not work out like that right so yes, uh, you know, yeah. everything will be we'll write it you know sir, make uh, sense one, of... one more thing is there sir uh, uh, this, uh, these are the codes what I've discussed with you, sir. After that, there is one more Python scripting also uh, present running in uh, DevOps, sir. So is this covered in our section, uh, Python scripting? See, Python, there are two things, guys, okay? See, Python uh, is uh, required for a DevOps kind of a role for some very, very particular kind of a cases, okay? Meaning that, even if you learn Python uh, as a course for developing a application, let's say you learn Python, you are very good at Python and you learn how to write a web application for that. Uh, that kind of experience is not required for DevOps. For DevOps, you will use Python in some sp specific kind of cases only, meaning that let's say today you are using Ansible and you want to do some uh, particular kind of a project and you have written everything in ansible there comes a point where you feel that one particular task you are not feeling comfortable in doing it in ansible but you feel that you can do that using python then you then uh, you will use python okay uh, i'll see you know see by the way guys python don't waste time too much waste on python uh, python it's a very easy language and for a devops you should just know some fundamentals and very some fundamental modules of python don't don't learn python for uh, course as a developer you know you will become a developer that is not the idea i'll see you know uh, sorry i mean if possible you know uh, i'll give one session on uh, python fundamentals and what you should know yes sir only reason man what is the problem is this, this course uh, is a pretty lengthy course so the big challenge for a trainer is lengthy course with, before people lose the motivation to to complete it sir finally one more thing sir uh, uh, chandrasekhar yeah. ravi sir uh, sir, sir here uh, this is this side uh... yeah uh, so my my doubt is uh, 
it takes uh, too many years of experience uh, to you also to uh, grasp such a high level position in the devops so will it be possible to cover this type of kind of exposure this type of many tools in within the two months and if no, no, if I, this is the possible no, then no, no, at no, what no. level we can grasp in the market no 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 two things i didn't tell i didn't tell concepts are tough neither i told that it will take long time to learn the concept only thing what i told is in the syllabus the number of tools that we are trying to cover are many the idea is cover everything possible and uh, you know whatever you required for your uh, uh, working this same syllabus is what is the knowledge what an architect in your company will have even a devops guy will have or even somebody out of college working on devops also will use the same tools okay so uh, maybe i don't know if i have, uh, if i have articulated it properly or not what i was telling is i was telling that because we are trying to cover lot many tools in the course uh, the big challenge for a trainer is to see that uh, you don't get uh, you know uh, kind of uh, what do you say uh, uh, board that saying that why we are doing so many what is the necessity we can just do ansible terraform go to job you can but you know when you are learning it what's the harm in just learning uh, all the tools whatever are required and what are most happening things because these all anyways you will your company they will be there but but generally what happens is if you are on a some four years experience or eight years experience they say okay we need you for ansible they tell you you keep working on ansible somebody will tell you okay keep working on terraform somebody will tell you keep working on cicd somebody might ask you to work on aws right but we don't know which which they'll ask you to work but most happening things and every company who are on aws these are the only topics they'll they'll use nothing else and and never did i ever say that uh, you know this tools you need a lot of time to learn it no you don't even you don't even need to uh, focus too much like like say you want to learn oracle you want to you should take one big book and read and all that these tools that also is not required guys because uh, uh, you know uh, you understand these things uh, things will fall in place yeah thank you sir thank you clear my doubt has been cleared yeah. hi ravi chandrashekar oh. here uh, I am from operations uh, part. Hello. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't have like tech knowledge and a little bit I can understand, but uh, I don't have that much of tech knowledge. So, do you think that I can come I mean, get through this? No technology uh, here, Chandrasekhar. Uh, Sorry. Whole, uh, no, okay. you, you don't need any requirement. The whole requirement, what is required, is little bit of knowledge on Linux, and that is where mm -hmm. we'll start the class. In fact, I'll say it that it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter whether somebody coming with 10 years of experience or coming pretty new. Uh, according to me, after first three, four days, everybody will be at the same level. Yeah, understood. And uh, one more thing, does it also play requests of uh, having a coding uh, knowledge or basic coding language? No need of any lang coding language. In fact, it's good if you don't have. Okay, uh, that means you can be trained easily. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Otherwise, we will tell them these tools. You have to think like that. He comes from a development knowledge. He'll say, no, no, I'll put some logic here and there. Then we have to tell, no, no, no need of logic. This guy will take care. Okay. 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 If you don't mind, I have missed some part, like half an hour or 45 minutes of this class. Just can you, like, you know, what is actually DevOps? If you don't mind, can you repeat? No, they'll. I think, I think they'll forward you the video. You can look into that. Okay. So okay. Every, sure, sure. Yeah, every every class, uh, just confirm it. Uh, I mean, whoever is dealing it, I think Malati or I don't know who is dealing this, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can just talk to them. They'll they'll send you the video uh, after every class. Oh, for sure. All right, yes, Thank I you. think I think we'll wind it up. Yeah, sure. It was nice talking to you all. Feel free if you have Hello. any questions. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ravi, sir. Hello, sir. Thanks, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Go Hello. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, Ravi, actually, sir, I want, uh, as I said before, I am from Become Honor. So, is it matter. possible to is it, it possible matter. to get a job after this DevOps course? As I am not from IT. No, no. What I am saying nowadays does it really matter what uh, whether you are a B Tech or a B Com or anything? It doesn't, right? It is all just making you know 
learning properly and telling confidently that I know. Right? As in, our company doesn't matter. Oh, okay, okay sir. And our company hiring from non-tech background students from non-tech background our company hiring them. See, I think so, right? When I, I at least I haven't heard, you know, where interviews they are telling, oh no, you should only from B B Tech or M Tech or this kind of. Do do people ask like that nowadays? No, sir, not yeah, as yeah. per my understanding. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? Guess what? What it matters? You can do a little bit of research yourself, but I don't. I think those days are over, right? Where people will ask you your what degree, which degree, and which subject, and all that. Getting okay, people itself thank you. where they'll tell all these things. Yeah. All right, guys. Nice, nice say. talk to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. All right. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank, you, sir. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, bye, guys.